Welcome back to the channel. I am so glad you're here. I'm so glad that we have this connection. And today we're gonna push that connection further together with roast beef. Roast beef with onion gravy. Now this recipe is great for during the week because it's simple, but it's also impressive enough to have for the holidays. Okay, here are the ingredients. There's barely anything. Let's get into it right now. All right, let's go over these ingredients. It's about helping you even though it helps me to have them set up too. All right, top round roast. I have a four, roughly a four pound top round roast here. It's a lean cut of meat. You can also use an eye of round or a rump roast. All three of those would make a really good roast beef, whether hot or cold, okay? We have some seasonings here too. We're gonna season this with salt. We have onion powder, black pepper, and garlic powder. I'll talk more about seasoning this roast and your options in a second. Then we have the gravy ingredients over here. Three tablespoons of flour, that's gonna help thicken our gravy. We have two and a half cups of low sodium beef stock. I'm just using better than bouillon. This was in the fridge, so it's like kind of bubbling and the fat is coming up to the top. One tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce or Worcestershire sauce or doesn't matter if you say it right, sauce. Wash okay. your sister sauce. Yeah, wash your sister sauce. Half a cup of dry white wine. You can use red wine, you can use uh, vermouth, you can use you can use different things, or if you can't have alcohol, you can feel free to omit it and follow the recipe exactly as is with just omitting that. I have a sprig of rosemary that gives a really nice flavor to this gravy. And then we have one large onion that I just sliced root to stem, a quarter inch thick. We're gonna sear it off, then we're gonna roast it on these onions. And then the drippings are gonna make the most unbelievable gravy. So let's just uh, get ready to sear this roast and I'll talk to you more about seasoning it right now. Okay, so get your oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit and we're gonna just sear this in a pan and then saute onions for a few minutes and then we'll cook it in the oven the whole time on low, 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, in the recipe, on the print the print recipe, I like to write them often so you don't have to do a lot more work. So that one would be like, you know, you go to the store, you get one of these, you can just salt and season it with garlic powder, onion powder, and pepper. And you just leave it out on the counter, like here, like on this wire rack, leave it out for like 90 minutes. The salt will absorb in there enough to season the inside of your roast. But if you want to go the extra mile, and I do recommend this, it'll be, it's a little bit better. I don't really notice that much of a difference with the saltiness of the meat, but it dries it out a little bit better. Salt it overnight, that's it. Just salt it and then put it in the refrigerator like this. Do not cover it. How much salt do you use? You're gonna use 1.25% to 1.5%. So just simply take the weight of your roast, okay? This is four pounds about 1800 grams. So if you were doing 1%, it would just be 18 grams of sodium. Okay, if you're gonna do one and a half percent, it would be 27 grams of sodium. In a nutshell, I did one and a half tablespoons of diamond crystal kosher salt here, which was fine, okay? So when you salt it overnight in the fridge, you don't have to, you don't have to put the pepper and all this, this doesn't matter. It's, this isn't gonna penetrate inside of it. It's really just the salt that's going to. So I'm just gonna put some onion powder and, um, garlic powder and pepper on all sides. And listen, you don't want to do any of this, you don't have to, because really all that beef needs is salt to be good. Okay, we're just gonna hit this up on all sides. Okay, so we have our roast right here off to the side. I have a 14 inch stainless pan here. On the recipe on the website, I used a cast iron pan, doesn't matter, just use something that is oven safe. So stainless, cast iron, perfect. You could even do this in a large Dutch oven. So since I'm using stainless, I'm gonna preheat this pan for about three minutes to a touch more than medium heat. I wanna get the, a nice sear on this roast. So probably like a six out of 10 I have here. Okay, it's been about three minutes. I have avocado oil. Remember, if you salted and you salted it for 90 minutes at room temperature, which is, which is totally fine, you might get some water wicking to the top of your roast. You can just give it a gentle pat so you get a better sear on it. If you did it overnight in the fridge, it's gonna be rel relatively dry. Okay, avocado oil, just a little bit here. There's not much of a fat cap on this. Some, sometimes they will uh, cut it and there's really nothing here. So either side is gonna be fine when we roast it in the oven. Okay, just get it in there, kind of press it. If you did have a fat cap, would you put the fat cap facing up? Yes, up in the oven because then the juice from the fat will drip into the meat. This is a top brown like roast, which you don't really see them sold this way. Most of the time, 
especially here in New York, where I'm from, it'll be just called London broil and it'll, they'll make a much thinner cut of it. And then they'll take a wider cut and people will just put them on the grill and then um, again, cook it rare and then just slice it against the grain. But we're using the same cut, just a bigger portion of it to make a really delicious uh, hot roast beef. Okay, we just wanna sear it equal, like equal time on each side. I just did about a minute there. Okay, and let's turn it over. Okay, see that? It's nice already like that. In about, yeah, about a minute per side. So this is my third side. Okay, like that. See that? Okay, we're just hitting up each side. I don't wanna like spend too much time doing this. I don't want, like I just wanna get like a little bit of sear. I don't wanna get like, I don't wanna be super gray like an inch in there. I'll get my sear, we'll probe it, and we'll get it in the oven. Okay, I'm just doing that last point side. Now the way this, the way they tied this, this is gonna be our rarer side, and the point is gonna be more cooked. Now they tied it to try to reduce this, but it was impossible. All right, that's good. It's good enough. Take that out. Let's get our onions down right away. See how it's very black on the inside here, so I'm just gonna put a touch of water. I just wanna get rid of this brown spot here. All right, that's decently cleaned now. Put a touch more oil in here too. I ran out of avocado oil, so I will uh, put some olive oil. And speck of salt. You know, if you like more onions, use a lot more onions here. I cut up like two mediums, but uh, the recipe says one large, but I'm stopping you. You could, do, you could do like five onions here. And you don't have to do this very long. This is good. Okay, I'm gonna turn off the heat. You don't even need to do this. It's just a little bit nicer. Say you did a lot of onions, you wanna just keep your meat a little elevated. Just stick an insert in there. Like anything you have, like round, like it, do it doesn't make a difference. And you know, if you do have a large fat cap, keep the fat cap up, but this thing really doesn't. So it doesn't really matter. Now look, if you don't have one of these instant read thermometers, you need to go buy one, okay? You can, I have a, I'll have a link in the description. You can use that if you like, or just go to the store and get one. This is gonna be better than having one of these. Now you should have one of these too. Now these are different tools, okay? This is an instant read probe one that you put in. This is more for like you're outside at the grill cooking a steak versus this one we're gonna probe in here and this will leave, stay in here the whole time when we cook it in the oven, which is really important, okay? I wanna get this probe into the exact center of my roast. Our roast is about six inches there, so yeah, it's gonna be to right about here and right in the middle, right there, about. The closer you get it into the middle, the more accurate your temperature is gonna be. And now right now, this is telling me that the temperature is 43 degrees. We had it in a 39 degree refrigerator. We took it out about 30 minutes before cooking. Doing that sear did not do anything on the internal part. We need to get this internal here up to whatever you like. I would recommend if you like this rare, I would cook this to like 110 to like 118. Okay, and it'll take it out of the oven and it'll come up a little bit. If you want it cooked more, if you want it like medium, maybe cook it to about 125, 130, but you know, this is a better roast when it's rare. Trust me on this, okay? So you could set an alarm on this or you could just stay in your kitchen while, while it's going on. It's, going, it's, it's only gonna take about, depending on where you like it, about 40 to 60 minutes. All right, so all we need to do is put this in the oven, not this part in the oven, this part has a magnet and this will stay on, this will stay on top of, of our oven. So it's been in the oven for 55 minutes and here it is. Ooh. Don't do one hand like I'm doing with this type of pan because it's a round thing here and it can like, you know, it can like pivot and turn. You don't wanna drop it. Okay, there's our roast. The way this one was shaped, and I mentioned it before, right now the probe is still saying 97 degrees because that's in like, it's towards this fatter side here. If I take this uh, instant read thermometer, okay, and I just go over here, this is gonna be, you know, and, and I get into the center of that, that's showing 120 right now. So essentially, you can do this a couple ways. I mean, you can get a more even looking roast next time, or you can just have like cook to it to how you like it on this side and it'll be more rare here. You can always cook it a little bit more. If you cook it to how you like it on this side, you're gonna have pretty much well done on the corner there. So kind of the choice is yours. 
I'm gonna keep it like this. This is fine for me. Let's get it out of this pan. And I'm just, I just have a new clean wire rack, not the one from before. And I'm just gonna put it on top of here. You can leave your probe in or take it out, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna tent that with foil and that's gonna give us enough time to make our gravy. Look, you don't want it there, you wanna cook it more, cook it more. It's, this is really simple to do. I, I just really think you're better off cooking it towards the rare side than, than to, the, to the well done side. You can always just cook it more if you need to. Roast is tented with foil so you have plenty of time here. Make sure that you keep a towel on your handle here because this handle is hot. It was in the 300 degree oven. Just something here so you know, all right? This little wire rack that was in here, okay, this thing you just get out of there. Okay, and then we have all our nice onions in here, okay, that we're cooking in the oven for about an hour. So now let's just turn our heat to medium. And we're just gonna make a really simple gravy. The nice thing about this is you can make this gravy, you can let it sit, you can let your roast sit for hours. You can let it cool and wrap it in plastic, put it in the freezer, then get razor thin slices for roast beef if you like, or you could just let it sit there and then carve it with a carving knife, which is what we're gonna do with our hot gravy. There's a lot of options you have here. Okay, you can hear that, it's nice. Lots of nice, oh, the smell of these onions right here. This is so good, simple. And then here's flour. This is just three tablespoons of flour, about 40 grams worth. And then let's just cook it in here for about a minute or two. Let's get rid of all the white specks. Listen, if you wanna take this longer, you wanna get a little color on here, a nutty flavor, you can. Your gravy will, will taste different, you can do that. But at a minimum, let's get all of this flour and have no white spots. You know, I don't have a lot of drippings in the pan here. The last one I did, the one that you'll see the photos of on the site, that had a nice fat cap on it. It left, left a lot more in the pan for me. So I don't have it here. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil and you could also put some butter or lard. I actually had the lard, I should have taken the lard. But that's it, you know? So just let it keep going. Let's get all these white spots out of here. There we go. Nice and brown now almost. And then let's just take our wine. That's just a half a cup of white wine. Scrape it again to remove all those brown bits, which is mostly the flour and a little bit of the pan drippings. And this is just a really simple way to make a nice gravy, very easy gravy. This is all gonna evaporate in a matter of seconds, which it has, it's gonna blend into the flour. Okay, and then we have two and a half cups of that low sodium, reduced sodium beef stock. It's just better than bouillon. Okay, I'm just gonna put in our cold stock right in here, just whisk it. Okay, turn the heat to high. You can also add in that one tablespoon of Worcestershire. If you listen, if you don't like it, you don't have to do that. Okay, rosemary. It's like a five ingredient gravy. Want to do different wine, do different wine. You don't have to do white. I cook with white more, more than red. So always have the cooking, the whites in the fridge. I'm gonna bring this up and it's gonna thicken up. It came to a boil finally, took a couple minutes. And then you can just lower it to a simmer. Simmer for about five minutes. If you're in a rush, you can go, you know, you can season this up right away and go for it. But you want your roast to rest for at least 15 minutes before you slice it. I'm gonna tell you, I've already tasted it. It's nowhere near as good as the first time I made it. And I know why. It's the first time I had a much better cut top round. It had a nice fat cap on it. I had a lot more drippings in the pan. So what you can do here, if you're in this situation, if you're used better than bouillon, you can add a little bit more, okay? Just add a little bit more to it. You can even take one of those like cubes, those Nor beef cubes which might help you a little bit. It's okay, that's it, that's what we have. We have the roast that, that we worked with. If you ever do buy one like that I got, basically it's not gonna have a lot of drippings, get some bones. Just ask your butcher, supermarket, wherever, for some beef bones, throw them in the pan with it while it cooks. That will create more drippings, okay? You can just roast it the whole time for an hour, it will give you more flavor, and then you can just discard them or you could save them for, you know, for a stock or something like that. Doesn't need salt. I'm gonna put a nice amount of pepper in here. It's got enough tang from the Worcestershire sauce. Like, you know, you don't need to put Dijon or anything like that, though you could. You know, we'll have to see what the taste tester thinks. But this is a nice um, consistency, and you have enough gravy here so you can make some mashed potatoes with it, or, you know, everybody gets some if you do like hot open face sandwiches, stuff like that. The roast has been sitting for a while. Here it is. Now listen, you want it super hot, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes rest maximum. This is roast beef, you really don't need to do that. 
And remember, you have the hot gravy, so even if it's a little cool, it's still going to be fine. This is gonna be like kind of our well done side, and then this is gonna be our rare side. Now look, I just wanna show you. So you see the grain here, how it's running this way, like this? And then if you turn it this way, running like this. So which way do you cut it? Like, what do you do? Like, honestly, I would just get a slice from here. But you could, you could, you could try to figure it out if you like. This is a slicer knife. I've shown this in a few different videos. Please get yourself one of these. You're not gonna be able to get a nice slice if you don't have it. Or if you do it, use a chef's knife, make sure it is super sharp. This knife is super sharp. I sharpened it for this video today, okay? So I'm just gonna take a slice here. Okay, there's one slice. I mean, you can get really thin like I'm doing here, like paper thin if you want. Okay, like beautiful thin slices of roast beef. Okay, look at that. All right, I think that's good for the taste tester. Now listen, this is rare over here. This is a rare roast beef. Other side here, which I don't really wanna cut right now, this is gonna be more well done, but I'll cut it anyway. Okay, it's about medium. It all looks good. It looks delicious. Yeah, and listen, you can just throw it back in the oven if you're like, oh, this is too rare for me. Just throw it back in the oven, but you know, this is fine. It's beautiful. I can't wait to eat it. So let's plate this up for the taste tester and uh, see what he thinks. Hi, James. Uh Sorry, it's kind of hard to cut. Yeah, really... this isn't the right plate. I should have given him a flat plate. I really like it. I, I really do like roast beef. And honestly, roast beef is good no matter what. It doesn't even need the gravy. You can just put it on a sandwich or something. I agree. The gravy wasn't as good this time as the other time I made it, right? Mm. You want to try the gravy by itself? Oh yeah, it tastes different. I didn't get as much beef drippings this time. So I had to like, Okay. Yeah, I had to like it. beef it up with like, you know, better than bouillon. It just, it just wasn't, it's not the same. It still is really good though. It's good with the mashed potatoes too. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a meal that you want to eat when you get back from basketball practice, right? Yeah. Yeah, this is good. I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10. That's very good. Can you explain to new viewers your ratings are, are a little bit more difficult these days? Yeah, they are. Um, I used to give a lot of things like nines and tens, but like now I'm only giving like the really, really good stuff tens and like then like nines. Like some tens could have been like an eight or a nine. Like you didn't give much color. You just said you like roast beef. Um, is it seasoned well? I salted it overnight. What do you think? The roast beef is seasoned well. I'm not the biggest fan of the gravy though. Yeah. But I really do like the roast beef. It's I think, good. I think, thank you. I think your mileage is gonna vary on that gravy. It, again, look at the pictures, the one on the website. It's, it's a top round roast. Had massive drippings in the pan. This one, not so much to mitigate get bones from the butcher and throw them in the pan when you make it. That's what I should have done today, but I didn't inspect that roast enough. So that's like, that's kind of like your secret to, to do it. Do you think the mashed potatoes and green beans are the perfect side for it? Or is there a better side you'd- I didn't even try the green beans. They're just steamed green beans. Yeah. Would you prefer a different side? Maybe like mashed potatoes and carrots. Yeah, carrots, carrots are always good. What about cream spinach? Actually, yeah, that's the best. Maybe we'll do a steakhouse video at some point. We'll do like potatoes and the cream spinach. That would be good. But this is the opposite of that. This is like your inexpensive yeah. uh, weekday beef recipe. And anyway, thanks, James. You're welcome. We'll see you next time.